Welcome to this lecture series on environment and ecology presented by Mentors for IAS in association with Namak APAC and Bangalore IAS Academy. So in this particular video, we'll be continuing with nutrient cycles where yesterday we have already completed uh, one part of nutrient cycles and I did mention that I'll be taking up gaseous cycles in the next video. So in this particular video, we'll start off with gaseous cycles. So gaseous cycles actually refers to the transfer and transformation of gases between various biogeochemical reservoirs that is the lithosphere, the hydrosphere, atmosphere and the biosphere. However, since this is with respect to gaseous cycles, it is always with respect to the atmosphere that we will be discussing because the atmosphere will form a major part of the reservoir of certain nutrients where in this particular video we will be taking up certain gases. So an understanding of the interactions between the reservoirs is actually essential for the assessment of gaseous geochemical cycles and the movement of elements and compounds within each reservoir and among reservoirs are called as fluxes. So in a gas cycle, nutrients move through the atmosphere and the main reservoirs as I have already mentioned will be the atmosphere and the hydrosphere. The cycling of oxygen, nitrogen, water vapour, carbon dioxide and trace gases such as methane, ammonia between the atmosphere and the biosphere results in relatively constant proportions of these compounds in the atmosphere over time. Without the continuous generation of these gases by the biosphere, they would quickly disappear from the atmosphere. So the process which is taking place in the biosphere is actually important, but the major reservoir for these certain gases will always remain the atmosphere, whereas the hydrosphere also will also play an important role. So just to sum it up, when compared to sedimentary cycles, gaseous cycles tend to move more rapidly and adjust to changes in the biosphere more rapidly. For example, you can take up local accumulations of carbon dioxide for example, which may be soon dissipated by winds. So what we will be doing in this particular video is that I will be covering water cycle, carbon cycle and oxygen cycle whereas nitrogen cycle will be taken up in the next video. Okay. So the first cycle that we will be covering up is water cycle. I am pretty sure everybody has some understanding of water cycle. This is very simple. So we will just briefly go through this particular cycle. So the water cycle is complex and involves state changes in water as well as the physical movement of water through and between ecosystems. Water found at the earth's surface can cycle rapidly but the water beneath the surface and stored in the form of ice cycles cycle rapid sorry uh, are very slow when it comes to this particular cycle so you can look at this particular diagram on your right hand side where you can see that water which forms a part of the surface water on earth is uh, cycled very rapidly whereas water which is stored underground or makes up for the subsurface water in oceans or which are stored in the form of ice and glaciers, they are recycled very slowly. Meaning, earth's water which is found along the earth's surface, they cycle rapidly, whereas water found beneath the surface, they cycle very slowly. Okay, so the water cycle is actually driven by the sun's energy. The sun warms the ocean surface and the surface water is caused to evaporate whereas ice is sublimed. I will just repeat it. The sun, the sun warms the ocean surface and the surface water causing water to evaporate and ice to sublime. Therefore, water in the form of water vapor enters into the atmosphere. Over time, water vapor in the atmosphere condenses into clouds and eventually comes down in the form of 
precipitation and when water reaches the earth's surface it actually has three options the first option is it may once again evaporate and enter into the atmosphere the second option is it may flow over the surface and reach lakes reservoirs or oceans so if it once again reaches the lakes and oceans once again it may form a part of the surface water and evaporate once again again continuing the cycle the third option is it may percolate into the ground so if it evaporates and reaches the sun the same cycle will continue however if it percolates into the ground two things can happen one water in the upper levels of the soil can be taken up by the plant roots some amount of water will be used for their metabolism and some amount of water may be lost through transpiration again back to the atmosphere when these plants are eaten by animals and then it's as then it moves through food chain and therefore it gets introduced into the food web or the ecological system itself so i hope i'm i'm pretty sure you should be able to appreciate this particular fact as to how water is introduced into the biological cycle or life cycle and this water also continues to move in the food chain or the food web so if the water is not taken up by plants the water can further percolate down but if the water is taken up by plants it gets introduced into the food web and this water is actually lost to the atmosphere or it may once again be excreted outside the system as animals do now the second option was that if water is not taken up by the plants this water may further percolate down into the subsoil and bedrock forming ground water ground water will slowly flow through pores and fissures and eventually reach lakes or come out of springs as springs and once again form a part of surface water and this cycle continues so this covers up water cycle next we'll take up carbon cycle See, I am not going too deep into all these cycles because I'm pretty sure this has already been covered. You'd have studied, read. And this is nothing but a kind of a revision. So we'll just keep it very simple and brush through or go through these uh, concepts as soon as possible. So next is carbon cycle. Now, obviously, carbon is an essential element of living organisms, and as of today, is also important in the form of fossil fuels. So the carbon cycle can be studied with respect to the rapid carbon exchange among living organisms and also the long term cycling of carbon through geologic processes now talking about the biological cycle carbon enters all food webs through autotrophs or producers these autotrophs capture carbon in two ways that is either carbon dioxide is directly taken from air or carbon dioxide which comes down dissolved in rain water as bicarbonate ions is taken by the roots from soil this cap this captured carbon is then used in photosynthesis to produce glucose when this carbon has already been captured by plants then what happens is the heterotrophs and other feeders like humans may consume the organic molecules and therefore the organic carbon is passed through the food chain this carbon is released back through respiration and also decomposers will release organic compounds and uh, carbon dioxide when they break down dead organisms so i'll just repeat it once the carbon dioxide or the carbon enters into the food chain how plants may take carbon dioxide directly from the atmosphere or carbon dioxide may be dissolved in rain water and comes down in the form of bicarbonate ions which are absorbed by the roots and therefore carbon is now introduced into the food chain so either you may have certain organisms which will feed on these primary producers and therefore the carbon is now passed on through the food chain or else when plants and animals die decomposers will break down organic matter uh, matter and once again carbon dioxide may be released into the atmosphere 
Now, apart from this, what can also happen is that some undecomposed organic matter may also get stored in PT layers of marshy soil which may take a longer time to be released. Therefore, carbon dioxide sometimes may get trapped for a substantial period of time instead of being directly released into the atmosphere. Uh, apart from this, what can happen is some carbon dioxide can also get dissolved in ocean water and it gets converted to carbonate salts or this carbon dioxide with this carbon dioxide which is dissolved in ocean water may also be used by shell forming organisms with to form their shells and when such organisms die their bodies will sink to the bottom forming carbonate rich deposits so this might also store carbon for a, for a considerable period of time and it is only when after millions of years through tectonic activity when this layer is pushed up it may be exposed to weathering and erosion and once again carbon may be released into the cycle. There is one other part, one other aspect of carbon cycle. I am pretty sure everybody can appreciate this. Organic carbon sometimes may also get buried under layers of earth and get stored in the form of oil, coal or natural gas only to be released when humans burn fossil fuels. So these are the important uh, aspects or concepts which are involved in uh, carbon cycle. One other way where carbon dioxide may be released into the atmosphere is also through volcanic eruptions. Okay, so the last concept for our particular video, oxygen cycle. Now this is very simple, very fairly simple. I am pretty sure everybody already knows this. So oxygen cycle is a cycle where oxygen is cycled through the nature. So all aerobic organisms use free oxygen for respiration and release carbon dioxide. Whereas green plants through photosynthesis use carbon dioxide and release back oxygen. The other way oxygen is produced is through photolysis where UV light from the sun will break down oxygen bearing molecules to produce free oxygen. I am pretty sure everybody knows this process where ozone is, breaking down, is, is broken down into uh, oxygen molecules and also nascent oxygen. So you have another way of producing oxygen in the atmosphere. So the same photolysis may also happen in water vapor, it may also happen to nitrous oxide thereby resulting in the formation or production of oxygen molecules. Uh, the, there's one other way where uh, oxygen may also get trapped. So what happens is that sometimes the lithosphere can also take in oxygen from the atmosphere through chemical weathering and other surface reactions where once again oxygen may get trapped for a considerable period of time. So these are the various uh, aspects which are involved in oxygen cycle. Okay, so we have covered water cycle, carbon cycle and oxygen cycle, whereas nitrogen cycle will be taken up in the next video. So this, these are just examples of the different kind of questions that you might get. So the question is consider the following, photosynthesis, respiration, decay of organic matter and volcanic action. So which of the above add carbon dioxide to the carbon cycle on earth? Photosynthesis. No, photosynthesis is by producers, autotrophs where they make use of carbon dioxide. They do not release carbon dioxide. They make use of carbon dioxide and they release oxygen. Respiration, we as organisms, of course, we breathe in oxygen and release carbon dioxide. Decay of organic matter, I did tell you, decay of organic matter does add carbon dioxide. When this process of breaking down of organic matter takes place, some gases are released, which also includes carbon dioxide. Finally, volcanic eruptions, yes, volcanic activity also releases carbon dioxide. Therefore, it is two, three and four. Okay, we have another question here. Uh, the question says, which one of the following is the process involved in photosynthesis? We have four options. Potential energy is released to form free energy. Free energy is converted into potential energy and stored. Food is oxidized to release carbon dioxide and water. Oxygen is taken and carbon dioxide and water vapor are given out. See, what happens is, the energy which is coming in from the sun is always free. This energy is actually used to produce food and energy is stored within the plants that is producers or autotrophs for its own functioning. Therefore, option B is correct, option A is not correct. Option A is the opposite. We make use of free energy to produce energy which we are, which we store in our body for our, for our own functioning. 
whereas option C says that food is oxidized to release carbon dioxide and water. See, uh, organisms, uh, these producers, they make use of carbon dioxide and water to produce glucose. It is not the other way around. And finally, we have D. D says that oxygen is taken and carbon dioxide and water vapor are given out. This is once again not true when it comes to photosynthesis. Carbon dioxide is taken out. Sorry, carbon dioxide and water vapor is uh, is used, whereas oxygen is actually released. So the correct option is option B. So uh, thank you for watching this video. If you do have any doubts, please do write in the comment section. Uh, thank you.